you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Just for a little while longer, I'm going to continue to preach on this power of God that's inside you in the name of Jesus. I want you to get a realization of it. I want you to put your faith in the power of God. I want to say that again. 1 Corinthians 2 said that my faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How do I get that faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. So what do I put my faith in? I put my faith in the blood of Jesus. That means God declared me righteous when I put my faith in the blood of Jesus. How many of y'all agree with that? Say amen. The moment I put my believing in the blood of Jesus, God, God gave me His own righteousness. How many of you with me now? Not my own. My own was filthy rags. But God gave me as a gift the breastplate of righteousness. Everybody in this room right now, you have on the breastplate of righteousness. You may not even have yet picked up your shield of faith, but you've got a breastplate of righteousness on. You may not even yet walk in the word. You know what I mean? The, the Bible talks about your feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace. You might not even walk in the word very much lately. But if you put your faith in the blood, you've got on the breastplate of a righteousness. You are the righteousness of God. Say that with me. I am the righteousness of God. That's faith in the blood. And then you take your faith and you want to put it in the power of God. The power of God. That your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. Are you with me now? How do I learn about that power? I read the word of God. And I see the power of God in action from Genesis to Revelation. Glory to God. I especially take note of the resurrection of Jesus. I especially look at the resurrection of Jesus. Three days dead, wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Glory to God. He was numbered with the transgressors. He was marred above every man. He was buried in the grave. He was unrecognizable. But on the third day, the spirit of the living God raised him from the dead. Far above all power and principality and dominion and might and every name. Every name. Every name. If it's got a name, Jesus' his name is greater than that name. His name is greater than every title. Come on. I just want to say that over sugar diabetes and high blood pressure and Crohn's disease, Crohn's disease. I want to talk to your body and I want to tell it today that the name of Jesus is above every title and every name. And Somebody say amen. If the doctor can give it a name, the name of Jesus is above it. If, if a scientist gave it a name, the name of Jesus is above it. If, if the psychiatrist gives it a name, schizophrenic, bipolar, ADD, ADHD. The name of Jesus is higher than any. Somebody shout amen with me this morning. Give the Lord a big old hand clap of praise. Would you do it? So now my faith was in the blood. It will stay in the blood. Once your faith is in something, it stays in that something. Anybody want to talk to me right there? Once you release it in the blood, it will always be in the blood. It will always be in the blood. Glory to God. I released it in the blood. Heard about it when I was a child. I'm now 14 years old, past nearly 48. Glory to God. <laughs> and I still put my faith in the blood of Jesus. It never stops. Once you put it there, it never stops. How many with me now? And then you want to put your faith in the power of God. Are you with me now? Where is the power of God that is available to me? Is it in heaven? No. Is it in Washington? No. Is it at the governor's palace? No. It is in me right now. It's inside your body right now. It's deeper than any problem. It's greater than any circumstance. It's more powerful than any situation in your life. Come on, greater is he. Um, I don't know how people can get tired of coming to a church like this. I don't know how people can oversleep and not get to a church like this. I don't know how anybody would be praying. I don't want to work. I want, Lord, I just don't want to work on a Sunday. I want to be able to get to the house of God. If I work, let it be later on in the day because this is life. This is victory. This is joy. 
unspeakable and full of glory. I'll be walking out of these doors today full of grace, full of glory, full of victory, strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, in the name of... Somebody shout amen. I'm getting fixed while I'm here. I'm getting worked on while I'm here. I'm getting energized while I'm here. I'm getting victory while I'm here. I'm getting breakthrough while I'm here. I'm getting healing while I'm here. I'm getting help while I'm here. I'm getting joy while I'm here. Glory to God. Y'all calm down over there. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. I know, I know. Can't, come on, you're 62. Calm down a little bit. Ain't I going to do it? Ain't I going to do it? Are y'all with me? Somebody say amen. All right, I better read the word. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, your love to all the saints, verse 16, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God... <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Amen. Verse 18. The eyes of your thinking it through, the eyes of your thinking about it, the eyes of your thinking it over, will be enlightened or have a spiritual enlightenment to the thinking. You will have a spiritual light on your thinking. You will have a spiritual influence on your thinking. You will have a godly influence on your thinking. You'll have a godly power to your thinking. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling on your life. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And everybody said amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. Ephesians 3, 14 through 16. For this cause I bow my knee. <laughs> I bow down unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you allow you, give to you, hallelujah, according to the riches of his glory, listen carefully, to be strengthened with might, to be strengthened with dynamite, to be strengthened with the equipment that will produce the power, to be strengthened with the power that will give you the results that you're looking for. That will strengthen you with the power that will be able to overcome any obstacle, any situation, any circumstance, any dilemma. Strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. On the inside of you is where the power of God is right now. Oh, lift your hand up and give God the praise. That power of God on the inside of you will control the temper that might be in your flesh. That power of God on the inside of you might control the, will control the weakness that is in your life. The flesh is weak. It will control your ability over your money. It will control your ability over situations, your hurts, your problems. If somebody abused you, that power of God will keep that abuse away from your mind, away from your activities, away from your thinking, away from your attitude, away from your conduct. Nothing will be able to weaken you. You will be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. There will be no fussing and fighting in your home. There will be no fussing and fighting around you. Even, even radical Islam will not be able to kill you or hurt you or destroy you because when they get around you, they were leaving the law of Islam and filling the grace of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
There is nothing to compare with the atmosphere of grace. There is nothing that can compete with the atmosphere of grace. Where grace is at, sin cannot abound. Where grace is, sickness cannot abound. That woman, as grace grows, will jump up out of that wheelchair. She will run around this building and give God praise and glory as grace and power abound. Somebody give God a crazy praise. Let me tell you about this church. It's no, this church is not patty cake, patty cake bakers, man. Roll them up, throw them in the pan. This is some shouting time, glory to God. Let's don't patty cake here. Let's patty cake at home. Give God a crazy praise. Amen. Ephesians 20. Now unto him that is able to do. Able to do. Able to do. Exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Listen now. According to the power that works in us. How much I let the power work in me determines how much the power works for me. How much I believe the power is in me. I'm not looking up there for the power. I'm not looking in this room for the power. I'm looking right inside here for the power. The power of God is on the inside of you. Christ in me, the hope of glory that will promote you, that will increase you, that will give you raises, that will give you favor, that will give you a better job, that will help you get a better home, that will give you the abundant living. I have come, moved inside you, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You know how I have life abundantly? Because it's on the inside of you right now. Hallelujah. Faith in the power. Say that with me. If I, if I have faith in the power, then my faith can direct the power. If I have faith in the power, then I can direct the power. Oh, let's direct it a little while. We direct it into every nerve in your body in the name of Jesus. Oh. Come on, let's have a miracle service right now. Come on, let's get a breakthrough right now. If I have faith in the power, I can direct the power to the back. And I can tell that opening in the back to be healed now in the name of Jesus. God is light. I don't want to be healed at the speed of man. I want to be healed at the speed of light. I want God to move my healing at 186,000 miles a minute in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Have me with me. Say amen. I need that power to move to my muscles right now. I need that power to move to my brain right now. I need that power to move to my heart, my lungs, my liver, my pancreas, my back, hallelujah, my spine. Come on, those discs. I need the power of God to move into those discs. I need it to move into my spinal column. I need it to move into my legs and my hips in the name of Jesus. Come on. I direct by faith the power of God. I by faith believe I have it. Now by faith I direct it. I direct it to my children in the name. I direct it to my children in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Where's that beautiful little redhead? There she is. Come here, redhead. How many of y'all love red? That's what I call her. Hallelujah. That's her name, red. How many think she's going to look beautiful now coming up? She's going to make me look better. Woo, baby. Woo. But just turn around one time. Just, just turn. Whoa. Jesus. Jesus, Lord God. Let me try that. No, I better not. <laughs> How many of y'all think that's some kind of beauty right there? I can take my faith and direct it into my children. I can take my faith and direct it into their bodies. Why? Because I'm a covering in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got you covered. I got you covered. Come on, say that with me. I got you covered. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. I can direct it into their bodies. I can direct it into their minds. When she goes to school this year, the power of God in me is going to give her favor in the name of Jesus. It's going to give her favor. She's going to be covered in the name of the Lord. Going to be covered with blessing in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God. Come on, somebody say amen. 
I can use the power of God in me over every place. I got to believe it that it's in me. I got to believe it when I direct it. I got to believe that it went to where I directed. I got to believe that it's working where I sent it in the name of Jesus. Give God, spend one more time, baby. Hallelujah. I would ask him to do that, but I know what would happen. How many of you know God's a good God? Y'all getting something from this right now? Faith, hallelujah. Glory to God. Exceedingly, abundantly above all that I can ask or think. Micah said, it's not going to be up there. Micah 1.8 said, I'm full of power. I'm full of strength by the power of God. I want you to believe that right now, that you are full of strength. That you are full of the power of God. Come on. That you are full of the power of God to take on any habit, to take on any situation, to take on any circumstance, to take on any dilemma, to take on anything in your body, anything in your life, anything in your attitude, anything working against you, anything financially. You've got the power of God in you. You're strong this morning because you've got the strength of the Lord on the inside of you in the name of you can endure it. You can overcome it. Somebody shout yes. 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 Hallelujah. You know, I went for a time and I would just endure. And I'd say, you know, I've got the armor of God on. I can stand this thing. I can fight this thing. And, you know, you weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, you got the armor of God on. You know, i got the armor of God on, armor of God on. But it's a greater revelation when you say, I've got the armor of God on, but I've also got the power of that armor backing me up in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Amen. Stay with me just a little bit longer. Ephesians 16. I'm going to give you some things that I want you to be strong in. I'm going to give you some stuff to be strong in. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might. It's wonderful to get an education. It's a tremendous thing to be blessed with a job. It's a wonderful thing to do certain things. But you want to make sure that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of all that He has and all that He can do. You want to be strong in his ability, strong in his wisdom, strong in his courage, strong in what God can do. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's when you can enter into rest is that you know the Lord is working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. He that's begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord will only work on your outside as much as you've let him work on your insides. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Strong in the Lord. How, Pastor, do I get strong in the Lord? Well, this strong in the Lord business, you'll get stronger in it by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll read about everything the Lord did. You'll read about everything that the Lord said. Come on. You'll begin to read like Romans 8. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You will learn this. If God would, would, would give us Jesus, how shall he not with him also freely give us everything else? We'll learn these things about the Lord. And it will begin to strengthen us about the Lord. Strengthen us in the Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on. Come on. How many you with me? Say amen. I want to get strong in the fact that he's the king eternal, the king immortal, the king invisible. He is the only wise God. He is the savior of our soul. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. He cannot fail. His word will not return void. Oh, somebody help me. He's got legions of angels. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about those that fear him. He's all over this building. He's all over your home. He's going before you. He's going behind you. He's on the inside of you. Somebody lift your hand and shout yes. You don't need drugs. I pray that every drug dealer in Abilene will go broke and have to either get saved or go somewhere else in the name of Jesus. Because you don't need it. 
There's something greater than a drug, greater than a medication. There's something greater than pornography for you. It's Jesus. He's Lord. Lord, there's no other feeling like the Lord is in me. The Lord is for me. The Lord's working on it. The Lord's touching it. The Lord's making a way. The Lord's doing it. The Lord's doing it. The Lord's doing it. The Lord's doing it. The Lord's touching it. The Lord's helping me. The Lord's on my side. The Lord's with my kids. The Lord's with my marriage. The Lord's with my finances. God Almighty. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord is with me. Let me all believe the Lord is with you. Come on, lift up your hand and say it with me. The Lord's with me. Come on, say it. The Lord's with me. Hallelujah. You better be careful. You better say it with me now. The Lord. I'm going to get on to you if you don't talk to me. The Lord is with me. The devil's watching what you don't say. Faith says nothing. Faith has, if you don't have no faith, you have no confession. If you don't have faith, you won't say a cotton picking thing because you don't believe it. If you believe it, you got to say it. The devil knows if you say it, you must believe it. And then he says, wait just a minute. I've got to open up every door. I got to give every opportunity. I got to back off. Look at me. The devil is not everywhere at one time. Most of you in this room have never any been, he's never even come at you. It is a familiar spirit. It is a spirit that is familiar with your actions. It's a spirit that's familiar with the way you are and your tendency. It learns what will keep you down, what will keep you discouraged, what will keep you thinking God's never going to do nothing for me. It works with your personality. It works with your feelings and your emotions. It's called a familiar spirit. Come on. And it works with it. It works. It works. And then that familiar spirit will then go to an unclean spirit and say, look, you can put pornography in there. It will go to a spirit of infirmity and say, I've watched them. They've got these weaknesses in their flesh. And this spirit of infirmity can come in and begin to inflict and inflict and inflict because they already have weakness there. But if you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might... I just told you a whole lot right there. Stay with me. I'm almost through. Glory to God. Romans 4.20. Number one, I'm going to be strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. I'm going to be stronger there than I am financially. I'm going to be stronger there than I am in my health. I'm going to be stronger there than anything else. Number two, strong in faith. Abraham was strong in faith. That's why finally at 100 years old, he wasn't looking at his body no more. He wasn't looking at Sarah's body no more. He wasn't looking at their age no more. He said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I heard a guy say one time, God said it. That settles it. No, it don't. You got to believe it. Because all things are possible to them that believe. Without faith, it's impossible. Are you with me now? So God said it. I believe it. That settles it. He was strong in faith. Here's how you know you are. You'll be giving glory to God because you know it's there. You'll be giving glory to God because you know it's in you right now. Better is in you right now. The blessing is in you right now. The increase is in you right now. The turnaround, the power is in you right now. In me, in me right now. Now, I've written something down. I'm going to stay right there. Leave it right there, Sister Trudy, just for a minute. Leave it right there just for a minute. How is it going to happen? Have you ever heard people say that? I don't know how this is going to happen. That's doubt trying to creep in. Let's be very careful. How is it going to happen? Where is it going to come from? Where is it going to come from? Is me doubting. It's me questioning. How it's going to happen is God. Where it's going to come from is God. How it's going to happen is God. Where it's going to come from is God. Where is it going to come from is the Lord. Where is it going to come from? It's going to come from the price that Jesus paid. Where is it? It is in me already. It is already down on the inside of me. My body is the temple of this living God. My body is the temple of this this power of God. 
I just don't know how it's going to happen. Yes, you do. That, I, I, Where's it going to come from? How am I going to get it? How am I going to get it? Where's it going to come from? The Bible says it doesn't come from the east or the west. It comes from the Lord. Everybody say, it comes from the Lord. So am I going to go around looking like this? Oh, Lord, when are you going to send? No, it's already in me because the power of God, the spirit of might is in you. It's in you right now. Everything God will ever do for you is already in you right now. The power to do it is in you right now. It's not your power. It's the power of God. So it's your faith in his power. It will never be your power, but it will be your faith in his power. Lift up your hand and just say, thank thank you, Jesus. 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 How many of y'all watch Isaiah Reed this week? That I ask you, if you watched Isaiah Reed, just wave your hand at me on Daystar. Pretty incredible, wasn't it? Did you see? Did you see after he was shot in the head, shot in the body, head blown off from here over, and stabbed 16 times by the Colombians, which that's that MS-16 gang, you know, they believe in stabbing. And so they stabbed him, and they stabbed him in the head. They stabbed him, put a knife right straight down in the middle of his head. And he's dead. And he, they throw him out in the alley. And a car runs over him. And he's dead. And they finally get him to the hospital. He's been dead five hours. He's dead. And they're there, and they say, we want the bullets out so we can find out who did it. So they start doing an autopsy. And they cut him completely open. And they open his chest bare, and there he is, dead. He's now been dead eight, nine hours. And they're doing this, they're doing all this stuff to him. And so finally they get a number and call his mama on the phone. And they call his mama on the phone, and they say, the doctor says, ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you, your son's dead. She said, he ain't dead. He ain't dead. Say it with me. She said, well, ma'am, I'm I'm just sorry to tell you, he's dead. Well, if he's dead, God lied to me. She said, what, what do you mean God lied to you? She said, because God said he's going to save my boy. Yes. Yes. And he was going to be a preacher yes. before he died. Amen. She said, well, ma'am, I hate to tell you, but your boy's dead. He said, no, she's not. And the doctor's having a conversation with him. him and she's telling him, no, he's not dead. And he's over there on the table, been dead now for seven, eight hours, chest open wide, and sits straight up and takes a deep yeah. breath. Yeah. Kind of crazy. How many know right then the doctor quit arguing with mama? It reminds me when Jesse Duplantis was in rock and roll. And uh, I met him right after he got saved. He was in old Mexico at a strip joint. And he was in there with his friends. And they were down there doing some things, drugs and stuff they didn't need to do. And all of a sudden the Hispanic bartender... Uh, in, in, in broken accent, it said, is Jesse Duplantis here? Is Jesse Duplantis here? And Jesse said, yeah, I, I'm here. What is it? He said, you want it on the phone? It's your mama. <laughs> and Jesse went to the phone and said, Mama, how did you know where I was? He said, God gave me the telephone number. I just dialed it. How does God do that? God can do anything. Come on. Come on, God. Come on, come on. Come on, let's start believing something. Come on, let's believe something. Come on, let's believe in this resurrected Savior. Come on, let's put our faith in this risen Lord. So even though God heals him, he decides, I'm going to kill them Colombians. I'm not going to serve you, God. I'm going to kill these Colombians. So he hooks up with the Philippines. Filipino drug dealers, and they go up to uh, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, if you've heard the testimony, and they're up there on the top floor, and they're high on drugs, and everybody, they got prostitutes up there, and everybody is naked. Nobody's got even any clothes on. And one of the prostitutes walked up and says, I just want to kill myself. She's overdosed. She's overdosing on heroin. I just want to kill myself. And he said, I'm still filled with this anger, filled with this anger, filled with this anger. 
And I said, no, if you try to kill yourself, I'm going to kill you. And all of a sudden, he said, the power of God shot through him. And he said to the prostitute, naked, and he's naked, let me pray for you. And he thought, where did that come from? That came from the Lord. That came from the, you see, the Lord wants to help you more than you want to help yourself. Somebody say, that came from the Lord. So he said, Lord, touch this girl. She fell out under the power of God naked on the floor. All the Filipino drug lords fell out under the power of God. Everybody in the room fell out under the power of God. Everybody in the room got saved and filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Everybody. Everybody. You got to tell me, God moves, baby. God's moving, right? And God's moving. Now he's a pastor of the church here in Texas. Good God Almighty. Give God a crazy praise. Power. Pastor, Pastor, how's it going to come? The power. When is it going to happen? Quit it. Put your faith in it. That it's working right now. I'm going to finish. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Not asking God when, giving God glory that it's done, being done right now in the name of Jesus. Not how, not when. God, it's you. You're the how and you're the when of my life. One more. Can you take one more? Hallelujah to God. It's not even 12. Glory to God. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. Strong in grace. Strong in grace. I'm going to tell you why that there's people that are not here today because they weren't ever strong in grace. They messed up a little bit. And because they messed up, they thought they couldn't live it no more. They weren't strong in grace. Why people don't think their lives are going to get any better? They're not strong in grace. Grace is the favor of God. It means God's on your side. So you're thinking it ain't ever going to get better? You're not strong in grace. You think you're stuck in where you're at? You're not strong in grace. You think you've done too much for God to forgive you? You're not strong in grace. The past keeps haunting you. You need to get strong in grace. Failure keeps reminding you. You need to get strong in grace. Because grace means God's on your side. You don't develop grace. You don't grow grace. God gives you grace. You don't earn grace. God gives you grace. God just gives you grace. You didn't know this. You did not know this so the devil could work on you. You went before God. You said, Lord, I need your help. That was humble yourself. The Bible says God gives grace to the humble. So what happens is you just said, God, I need your help. Then the devil knew grace was going to come because he knew you humbled yourself. So what he did is he began to magnify everything. Begin to magnify, begin to just do everything that he could so that you would not receive or see the grace when it come. That you would not get up and say, wait a minute, I humbled myself before God. Now more grace is here. And if grace is here, God is for me in this situation. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to get afraid of it. I'm going to step out because something's happening. Something's working. Something's changing. God's doing something because I humbled myself and asked God to do something in this situation. But because you didn't know grace was coming. There's a man in our church. He knows who he is. He's here. So when I say this, it will be up to him whether he wants to raise his his hand. I will not acknowledge who it is. He will have to acknowledge himself if he wants to. If he doesn't want him, then then, 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 then that's just because he doesn't want people to know. That it's him. But he told me the other night, he said, when I went to work at the job that I went to work at, they told me this is the greatest amount of money you will ever make here. They they showed him his limit. And he told me, he just looked at me Tuesday night and he said, Pastor, I am now double past that limit. Double. 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 I said, Tom, 
There ain't no way. You can write it down, but God's bigger than what you write down. They can put a limit on it, but you serve an unlimited God. Give God a crazy praise. That's being strong in grace. That's being strong in grace. So they didn't give you that position. So they didn't do this thing. Just go and say, I'm going to get promoted now into more grace. I'm going to step into more grace. I'm going to, I'm going to get into more grace. I'm going to get into more grace. Promote yourself in the goodness of God. Promote yourself in the glory of God. Stand up. Would you stand up? How many of y'all think that's a good-looking 19-year-old fella? Did I help you out a little bit? His wife's going, baby, baby. <laughs> At his job, they said, they said, if you could just do this, if you could just get this amount, if you just do this amount, it's the, it was the biggest amount he would have ever done in sales if he just did that amount. But he believes in favor. They fa favor over each other. They speak favor over each other. Can you hear an amen at that? He went $20,000 above. The highest goal they have ever set him to, he went $20,000 above it, getting the biggest paycheck he ever got in his life. Turn around and let everybody look at that face. You say, is that God? Yes. They know they have learned to speak favor over their lives. To be strong in grace. Come on. Get away from your weakness. Get away from that stuff and say, wait a minute, I'm strong in grace. I'm strong in the favor of God. I'm strong in the favor of God. I'm strong in the favor of God. I'm standing in the grace of God. I'm standing... In the favor of all my, if God be for me, who? How's it going to come? The Lord. How am I going to get it? The Lord. Come on. How's it going to get to me? It's already got to me. It's in me right now. Let me give you two quick scriptures. John's gospel. John's gospel. Strong in the grace. It is in Jesus. You got those scriptures in John, Sister Trudy? Hallelujah to God. John 14, 26. But the Comforter. How many believe you got a helper? How many got a helper? How many believe you got a helper? Come on, you got a helper. So the devil loves for you to walk around saying, I've just about had enough of this. The devil wants you to feel fed up. The devil wants you to feel wrung out. But you got a helper. Let me believe you got a helper. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not... If you're too weary, just wait on the Lord a little while. Listen. The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Here we go. He shall teach you everything. He'll teach you how to be strong in the Lord. He'll teach you how to be strong in faith. He'll teach you how to be strong in grace. Strong in grace. Strong in the Lord. He'll teach you how to do it. Holy Ghost is your teacher. I can only do so much. I can only do so much. You just think about me. Think about this. Think about this. I got three times a week. I got a total of about uh, two hours to invest in your life out of all week long. You get 40 hours, 60 hours at work. You got this. You got that. You got your kids. You got your grandkids. And I got two, two and a half hours a week to do everything I can do. You need more than that. You've got to have a helper. That's, I promise you that at, at four hours every day, I'm on my knees in this Word of God every day, every day, six days a week, Monday through Saturday, making sure that I lay it out, give it out, that it's God, it's God, it's God, that you don't feel me, you don't know that you're hearing from me, that it's beyond me, it's bigger than me, it's greater than me, it's God. I'm not, I'm not edifying myself, but come on, somebody say amen. I want you to know how it gets here in the name of Jesus. I don't care, I don't care how the sound sounds all that well. I don't care how 
how comfortable everybody is. I've been down there in Africa at 110 degrees and saw 50,000 people show up and watch dead people come back to life and people with leprosies get healed and signs and wonders. God doesn't move in an air-conditioned room. God doesn't move when everything's perfect. God moves where there is faith. Somebody say amen. And one thing I'm going to have when I come here is faith in God, baby. I may not be the best at it, but I'm going to be the best at faith you ever saw around you in the name of Jesus so we can do this thing together in the name. You might as well shout a little while. He'll teach you all things. Number two, he'll bring everything to your remembrance. So when the devil does this, the Holy Ghost is saying, but God said. Always in your dilemma, you've got the devil talking to you and you've got the Holy Ghost reminding you. Last but not least, stay with me now. John 16, 23. How be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. Not just teach you, but guide you. So I could go to work with Todd. Oh, help me, Jesus. I could go to work with Todd. Todd works on the biggest, some of the biggest cranes in the world. Todd is, is trained in such a way that there is nobody, nobody that can do what he can do. He's, he's, that, he's that talented and has that kind of ability. No, in his ex world of expertise on them cranes that you see, when the problem is too big for anybody else, they dial 1-800-NEED-MORE-HAIR. <laughs> He's worked it clean off. <laughs> I'm you with me. How many of y'all love me? Say amen. amen. So if I go to, to Todd to go to his work, how many of you know he can teach me and teach me and teach me and teach me? Because that's what he's trying to do with some of these guys. And they'll quit. And they can't see it. But the difference between teaching and guiding is, is that guiding actually gets your hands on it. Guiding gets into your mind. Guiding gets into your nature. Since Tom waved his hands, they, he had a situation at work where there was thousands and thousands of dollars available. And Tom had never moved into that area to make it to where it would come to where he worked. And he said, God, give me the wherewithal. God gave him the wherewithal Amen. to reach in there and guided him, and he was able to capture all that money and bring it in. Yes. Did I tell it right? There was something he did not know how to do, but God guiding him into the doing of it. Yes. Holy Ghost, guide me into your power about this in my body. Guide me into your power about this in my child. Guide me into your power about this habit. Guide me in your power about having to work with finances. Because one of the greatest attacks always is going to be money. Money. Honey. Ooh. I want my wife to come stand by me. How many of you think she looks exceptionally too good looking almost for me to even be married to? I would ask her to twirl like Aaron, but we know what'll happen. We'll be picking Sister Estes up. The earth would move. The earth shakes under my. My wife's in the hospital. The doctor said there's nothing we can do. It was up at Abilene Regional. It was in uh, May, uh, March, March, March before Easter. And the, they said nothing we can do. And so I'm 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 in there. And I've been sleeping in my truck at night in the parking lot so that I can pray. I didn't leave the facilities except to come to church and to thank God to go take a shower, change my clothes. And so I'm, I'm in there, and the Lord speaks the message that I'm supposed to preach on Sunday. On a Sunday, surely there is an end. I mean, I were here that day. Surely there is an end, and my expectations shall not be cut off. And so my wife is laying up there with... Uh, she was an ICU. In Dallas. Was you in Dallas then? Okay. She's an ICU now in Dallas. 
We got her up there. We had to, she had to go on an ambulance, $8,900 for the ambulance ride from Abilene to Dallas. How many of y'all with me? Say amen. And so she's up there, and oh, this stuff's going on, this stuff's going on, this stuff's going on. She's got IVs running in all over the place. Da, 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 da. And as of yet, as of yet, the, the conclusions have not come. The stuff has not. And I said, uh, I said, do you want to know what I'm preaching Sunday? And she said, yeah. I said, surely there is an end, and my expectation shall not be cut off. And it jumped from my spirit to her spirit. She said, straight up in bed. Threw up them hands, started speaking in tongues. Pow, just, just like pow, pow. The turnaround was in us all along. But that day, by faith in the power, the turnaround went from inside to all sides. It went everywhere. It went all over the place. I was in a room where there were six beds in ICU. And each two beds had a nurse. And I, I could have cared less. Because it didn't come out of my mind. It didn't it come out of my voice. It came out of my spirit. And I could have cared less who was in those beds or how many doctors, how many nurses. It didn't matter because it wasn't me that did it. It was the spirit in me yeah. that came out of me. Yeah. Woo! 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 I'm here to tell about it. I'm happy. <laughs> Woo! Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. If you well, want to be what I do, you had to be where I've been. Yeah. 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 You ought to say our little dog at home. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is good. She told you the truth. If you've been where we come out of, you'll praise like we praise. Can I get you to look at God's brought you from a mighty long way? Let me believe God's brought you from a mighty long way. I've got to close. I want Brother Dolan to come stand up here with me. Brother Randy Heiss, come over here with me. Most of, some of you weren't even here then, but last was it last year toward the beginning of last year? It looked like Brother Dolan was having a heart attack right here at church. How many of y'all were here when that happened? Right there, right here. And he went down on us. He went down on us. And his, you remember Shane? Shane got up here too. She, he went up here. Last May. It was last May. A year ago, last May. He was praying for somebody and he went down on us. And every indication was that Randy, I mean, that Brother Dolan was having a heart attack. And he went white on us. He stopped breathing on us and everything and we it, and it was like all oh, I just watched it as so many of these young people just jumped right in there I mean they just jumped right in the middle of him I mean they just got right down on the floor with him and they started praying in the Holy Ghost and speaking the word of God and brother Dolan started reviving and a little while we had him sitting over there right there where uh, on that front row where Sweet people are, Bruce and Juanita are. And they came in the ambulance and get him. Took him to the hospital. And so we dismiss everybody, go home. And so I tell them, I'll be up there in a minute. And we get up there. And they examine this man from head to foot. I mean, they did every kind of thing in the world. And they just tell him, oh, I don't know what happened, but you ain't had no heart attack. You ain't got no. They, we, can't, we can't find one thing wrong with you. I want to remind everybody that was here that day, that was the power of God coming out on the inside of you. 
Now it's still right there, sweet baby. And the devil is hoping with his fingers crossed, his legs crossed, that you ain't going to use it. But you're going to use it in the name of Jesus. I want you to stand together with me and give God a crazy praise. He has had no problem since then. None. Went to get a checkup. Nothing, nothing, nothing in that heart. How many love the Lord? Say amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're going to believe in that power with me right now. How many believe that power is on the inside of you right now? First of all, it's believing that it's there. Number two, it's believing that you can direct it to where you need it. You believe that when you direct it, it does it. It goes there. And it's working on it. And then you just start praising God because it went from you by your faith to where you need it. And where you needed it, it's working on it right now. And you're just going to praise God for it. And there's no reason now for you to question that it's working. There's no reason why that you in some worry need to peek and see if it's working. You just praise God because you know it's working. It's a working. It's 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 working. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Now, last week I had you come down about the power in you. Now I'm going to have those of you that need to come down and you need to say, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to direct this power. I'm going to speak a direction to it. I'm going to give it something to work on. I'm going to give it by faith something to activate on. And then I'm going to believe that it's working that thing. Just like it's working in me, it's working on that thing. It's working on that thing. It's working on it. And I'm just going to give God praise and glory about it. Because I know it's working. I'm going to give God all the glory over it. Because I know it's working. And then that power is going to present to me the finished product. The finished product. Are you with me now? I'm not going to put my hands on it again until God's finished with it. How many of glad you come this morning? How many got something from the Word of God this morning? Come on, how many got something from the Word of God? If you didn't, it's your fault. I'm just going to tell you straight up. Glory to God. Made everything available for you that I could in faith. Glory to God. Sent it out by faith. Threw it in me by faith. Released it by faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. If that's you right now as we sing there's power in the name of Jesus, I want you to come up here and I want you to get ready to confess the power of God to the position, the place, the circumstance, the sickness, the disease, the situation that you need it in the name of Jesus. And believe it that it's working on it in Jesus' name. They're ready to pray for you when you're ready to come. There's power.